Thanks very much. Um, once you figure out what graph you want to use, you know need to know where to put it. So can we advance, please? Next. Here are my disclosures next. So in order to figure this out, we need to think about this as like a dartboard. We need to see the dartboard on both sides. We need to figure out where the target is. And then we need to figure out how to hit the bullseye. Next. So the dartboard consists of the normal anatomy of the ACL. We want to get the graft in the center between the two bundles. We should be all familiar with this anatomy. Next. Again, location is key, and it's probably the most important concept, despite all the arguments we've had about graphs. Next. So in order to hit the bullseye, you need a target. Next. So we've done extensive research, as have others, to figure out where the femoral side of the ACL should be. And if you do independent femoral tunnel drilling, that means either an accessory medial portal, outside in, or a flexible reamer, uh, then you should have a fluoroscopic view that shows uh, your tunnel about 75% of the way across uh, and below Bloomis S line. Next. So if you look uh, from the anterior lateral portal, next. And uh, I would submit you probably should look from the anterior medial portal because you get a much better view. Next. So where do you put your femoral tunnel? Next. I choose G, G for good. And I locate it here, next. And uh, if you get a fluoroscopic image of that after you retrograde your drill pin back, you will see it's at that location, below Blumen's test line, about three quarters of the way across. Next. So the bottom line is, no matter how you get there, that's where you need to be. Next. Well, how about the tibial tunnel? This is an area of uh, much new research, especially by us, and I call it the neglected tunnel. Next. So we did a study, and uh, Bill Beach probably won't be happy that we had less than 100 people in each group, but we had 50 patients, uh, and we looked at anterior versus posterior tunnel placement based upon the Staubli line of 40%. Next. When we did this, uh, we showed a one millimeter side-to-side -side difference on KT if the tunnel was placed anteriorly. Next. We're not the only persons who have advocated for anterior tunnel placement. There's a biomechanical study by Amos, uh, another one by Beattie, a clinical study uh, in uh, Japan, and uh, our own cadaveric study that shows you don't have any roof impingement when you do independent tunnel drilling. Next. So how about this? Where do you put the tibial tunnel? If you view from the lateral portal, this is the view you have. Next. But if you make that tunnel more superior from a more superior portal, you get a better view, the, the so-called 50-yard line view. Next. So where do you place your tibial tunnel looking from the superior portal? Again, I push G. Uh, and when you look fluoroscopically, it's right about 35 to 40% of the way across Blumenstadt's line. Next. Correction, that's uh, Stobley's line. So here, next, here's a video showing uh, that in a second. Uh, and uh, we do that by placing, uh, the, uh, as I indicated, let's go right to the video next. Uh, again, these are the locations, next. This is a video we put together for the Academy about a year ago. It's a one minute video. We get the medial portal, you assess, you pick your point G. You uh, use that point and hyperflex the knee, retrograde your drill back. Choose your tibial tunnel, slightly anterior. Take a fluoroscopic view. Again, those landmarks I indicated to you. And then we retrograde the pin back using uh, this uh, uh, cannula and drill. Be careful of the medial femoral condyle. Use a, a, a partially threaded drill bit. And then pull your sutures in for passage. Draw your tibial tunnel. And there you have it. Okay. One, minute, one minute ACL. Thank you very much for your time.